Let's pray before we begin. Lord, please let us understand your word and put it in our hearts. May it shape our lives to be more like your son. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Real quick, if you like this content, please like, subscribe, and share this with your friends. Thank you. Chapter 44 Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jesurin, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thine offspring. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the watercourses. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord, and surname himself by the name of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And who as I shall call, and shall declare it, and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people? And the things that are coming, and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God, I know not any. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and their delectable things shall not profit, and they are their own witnesses. They see not, nor know, that they may be ashamed. Who hath formed a god or molten of graven image that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed, and the workmen, they are of men. Let them all be gathered together, let them stand up. Yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. The smith with the tongs both worketh in the coals, and fashioneth it with hammers, and worketh it with the strength of his arms. Yea, he is hungry, and his strength faileth. He drinketh no water, and is faint. The carpenter stretcheth out his rule, he marketh it out with a line, he fitteth it with planes, and he marketh it out with the compass, and maketh it after the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. He heweth him down cedars, and taketh the cypress and the oak, which he strengtheneth for himself among the trees of the forest. He planteth an ash, and the rain doth nourish it. Then shall it be for a man to burn, for he will take thereof and warm himself. Yea, he kindleth it and baketh bread. Yea, he maketh a god and worshippeth it. He maketh it a graven image and falleth down thereto. He burneth part thereof in the fire. With part thereof he eateth flesh. He roasteth roast and is satisfied. Yea, he warmeth himself and saith, Aha, I am warm, I have seen the fire. And the residue thereof he maketh a god, even his graven image. He falleth down unto it, and worshippeth it, and prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my god. They have not known nor understood, for he hath shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand, and none considereth in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire, yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof, I have roasted flesh and eaten it, and shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? He feedeth on ashes, a deceived heart hath turned him aside, that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee, thou art my servant. O Israel, thou shalt not be forgotten of me. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself 
that frustrateth the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish, that confirmeth the word of his servant, and performeth the counsel of his messengers, that saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah, Ye shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof, that saith to the deep, Be dry, and I will dry up thy rivers, that saith of Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Matthew Henry Commentary on Isaiah chapter 44, verses 1 to 8. Israel is here called Jeshurun, which means the upright one. Such only are Israelites indeed, in whom is no guile. Those that serve God he will own. He will help them over difficulties and in their services. Water is the emblem of the Holy Spirit. As water refreshes, cleanses, and makes the earth fruitful, so do his influences the soul. This gift of the Holy Ghost is the great blessing, the plentiful pouring out of which God kept for the latter days. Where God gives his Spirit, he will give all other blessings. Hereby shall be a great increase of the church. Thus, it shall be spread to distant places. Was there any other rock or protector that could defend them? None besides could foretell these things to come, of which God by his prophets gave notice. All was set in order in the divine predictions, as well as in the divine purposes. Could any other have done so? Who can compare with Israel's Redeemer and King? Verses 9 to 20. Image-making is described to expose the folly of idolaters. Though a man had used part of a log for fuel, he fell down before an image made of the remainder, praying it to deliver him. Man greatly dishonours God when he represents him after the image of man. Satan blinds the eyes of unbelievers, causing absurd reasonings in matters of religion. Whether men seek happiness in worldly things or run into unbelief, superstition or any false system, they feed on ashes. A heart deceived by pride, love of sin and departure from God turns men aside from his holy truth and worship. While the affections are depraved, a man holds fast the lie as his best treasure. Are our hearts set upon the wealth of the world and its pleasures? They will certainly prove a lie. If we trust to outward professions and doings, as if those would save us, we deceive ourselves. Self-suspicion is the first step towards self-deliverance. He that would deliver his soul must question his conscience. Is there not a lie in my right hand? Verses 21 to 28. Return unto me. It is the great concern of those who have backslidden from God, like the Jews of old, to hasten their return to him. The work of redemption wrought for us by Christ encourages to hope for all blessings from him. Our transgressions and our sins are as a thick cloud between heaven and earth. Sins separate between us and God. They threaten a storm of wrath. When God pardons sin, he blots out. He dispels this cloud, this thick cloud, so that the way to heaven is open again. The cloud is scattered by the sun of righteousness. It is quite gone. The comforts that flow into the soul when sin is pardoned are like clear shining after clouds and rain. Let not Israel be discouraged. Nothing is too hard for God. Having made all, he can make what use he pleases of any. Those that learn to know Christ see all knowledge to be foolishness in comparison with the knowledge of him, and his enemies will find their counsels turned into foolishness and themselves taken in their craftiness. The exact fulfilling the prophecies of Scripture confirms the truth of the whole and proves its divine origin. The particular favours God designed for his people in captivity were foretold here long before they went into captivity. Very great difficulties would be in the way of their deliverance, but it is promised that by divine power they should all be removed. God knew who should be the deliverer of his people, and let his church know it that when they heard such a name talked of, they might know their redemption drew nigh. It is the greatest honour of the greatest men 
to be employed as instruments of the divine favour to his people. In things wherein men serve themselves and look no further, God makes them do all his pleasure, and a nobler shepherd than Cyrus does his father's will till his work is fully completed. Please consider, how does this chapter apply to you? Thank you for listening. If you want to know more about Jesus and what the gospel means to you, then hit the video shown on the left of the screen and please don't forget to subscribe. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless your day.